You're listening to the International Moving Podcast, your guide to moving to another country, brought to you by SDC International Shipping, LA's finest. An international move is exciting. It's a time to start over, establish a new business maybe, reestablish family ties, or retire where your budget will do more for you. Please enjoy today's episode, and if you have any questions about your international move, give us a call at 888-779-3962. That's 888-779-3962. Hey everyone, this is Jim for SDC International Shipping. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me for today's podcast episode. This is the podcast where we talk about moving to other countries, the expat life, what other countries are like, and the actual shipping process, air freight, sea freight itself, and all the little intricacies that go along with it. So whether you're planning an international move today, tomorrow, or maybe just have it in the back of your mind for some time in the future, I think you'll get a lot of good information from this podcast and from these episodes, things to think about, things that maybe you never would have even considered had you not listened. And so I'm glad you're here today. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about items that are not permitted for international shipping. And so this is one of those things where you would think, well, if I just use my common sense, I'm sure that I realize what Uh, would be permitted and what wouldn't be permitted. It's just a matter of common sense. But unfortunately, yeah, common sense does play a uh, pivotal part, I would say, in three quarters of it. But the other quarter deals with things maybe you never even thought of. Maybe you would think, why wouldn't they allow this in another country? This doesn't harm anyone. So rather go through the reasons why. It's just better to know that this is not allowed to be shipped into the country that you're going to. Because if you're not aware of it, now let me just put that on pause for a moment and add this in here. If you work with a company like SDC International Shipping, and maybe you speak with an attorney or an accountant to deal with the other aspects, the legal aspects, the financial aspects of you relocating internationally. And so let's say, for example, you think to yourself, you live here in the United States and you want to kind of put one foot into the expat lifestyle and keep another foot here. Sometimes people that come to the United States or leave the United States do so for a period of time. And so they have one foot in one country and another foot in another country. And that's understandable why. I mean, a lot of people like to live in a different location, but they're not in a place where they really want to renounce, I guess you would say, their citizenship and take on the citizenship of the new country, although some people opt to do that as well. But maybe you're thinking to yourself, I'll try living in a different location, a different country for a few years, see what it's like before I commit to the long term, never having lived there before. I know people do that even within their own country. They move to a different location. The grass look greener on the other side. And soon they discovered things about that location that they never considered before. And as it turns out that that location wasn't really such a good fit for them. So you could see why you would want to keep your American citizenship, even if you were going to be in another country, maybe for the next several years. And even if in the back of your mind, you're thinking, The United States is a great country. I've had plenty of great experiences here, but I'm getting older. I'm getting ready to retire. And let's say you vacationed in Spain before or certain parts of Mexico or Central America, wherever, Asia, wherever. And you think my money will go so much further there. And I like the slower uh, pace of life there. I'm just going to retire there. And so, you know, the process isn't immediate. It's not like you, you, know, you sign up for one country and then you, you put an X through the other country and now you're a citizen. Of course, there's more that, that goes um, into it than that. But getting back to this, the reason why I'm mentioning all of this is because these are a lot of the things that I think people think about in the back of their mind. And maybe, for example, you're going to be making an international move. You plan to stay there a year or two, maybe three years. You're going to test it out. If you're younger, maybe you're getting an education in that country. Maybe you're moving over for business reasons, new opportunities, new adventure. It could be anything. But when you come back to our destination point, let's say here in the United States, it's really important to recognize that there are certain things 
that you will not be able to bring potentially into your destination of choice. And there are certain things that have been on the prohibited list for many years. The first time I saw this list, I didn't understand why some of these things are on there. They didn't make sense to me. But whether it makes sense to you or not is really irrelevant. The fact is they already have laws in place. And if you're at customs, can you imagine being at customs and you, you're you in for a surprise because you just what, you use your common sense, you put things together, you put the proper labels on there. For example, I'm going to, let me scroll down here. I have a list of things on the screen in front of me I wanted to talk to you about. The first is food and liquids. Imagine that you're a foodie and there are certain herbs and spices and and bottles of um, that you have in your kitchen. One of the most common restrictions imposed by customs authorities around the world is on perishable and non-packaged food items. And these can be things like fresh fruits and vegetables, dairy products, meat. But on a similar level, uh, shipping liquids such as alcoholic beverages, non-sealed containers may also be prohibited. And so maybe you have quite a bit of money invested in certain things that you stock in your kitchen and you just assume, well, I'm only going to Mexico, for example. If you're here in America, I'm only going to Mexico or I'm only going to Central America. It's not really that far. And these things will be fine if they're packaged. When they get there, I'll just take them out. And and these aren't things that need to be refrigerated. And then suddenly in customs, everything comes to a grinding halt. They discover that you have certain things and suddenly... You can't bring any of these things. And then suddenly all of your boxes are being opened and you're just in for a situation that you did not see coming. This kind of thing happens a lot, unfortunately. And it just creates the kind of stress in your life that you don't need. And it can happen on any side. It could happen uh, upon you leaving, going through customs, and upon arriving (laughs) to your new destination. So it's really important to talk to people, work with people that understand this, that are up to date with the latest information. So if you work with a company like SDC International Shipping, this is something we do every day. So we're up to date on what is, what you can bring, what you can't bring, and the intricacies involved with every type of item you can imagine with whatever destination country that you're going to. We take care of that for you. Now, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you may think, well, I went online to an expat group on Facebook and One of the people there or two of the people there told me it was fine to bring that. Well, maybe it was fine when they made their move, but that was two or three years ago, possibly longer. And within that time, the laws have changed. And so sometimes you have to, I don't know, be a little bit careful about some of the information that you read online because people want to be helpful, but sometimes the information that they're giving happens to be dated. And so it's recommended generally that when it comes to any kind of food or liquid that you consume whatever needs to be consumed before you leave. You're not going to pack it. You're not going to take it with you. You're going to dispose of perishable food items, which of course makes sense before you move. And you're going to check with regulations regarding any kind of liquid in your destination country. And again, if you work with SDC, we'll help you with all of that. Next comes explosives and chemicals. Explosives, most people would understand that, have no problem with that. Uh, fireworks, flammable substances. Some substances are flammable and people don't recognize it. We do have that hazard uh, chemical label on most things. Um, so maybe you have a side business and you do something that involves certain types of chemicals. But as it turns out, those are going to be strictly prohibited from shipping internationally because items like these just in a shipping container, pose a significant risk to safety and they are subject to some of the most stringent regulations. So to avoid any potential harm or legal consequences, you don't want to package or ship any such items. Now, somebody in the back of their mind may be thinking, well, what do the fireworks companies do? Don't they ship things overseas? Aren't fireworks made in China? Yes, but they have their own type of inspection. They have their own systems that are made just for those things. We're talking about a residential move. You can't pack in those things into a residential kind of situation. Next, narcotics and illegal substances. Of course, that would be another thing that should go without saying, but it's important to remind people that 
Now, what's considered maybe an illegal substance in one country or legal in one country may not be legal in another country and will not be allowed to be shipped across borders. So it's important to familiarize yourself with the drug enforcement laws, and that includes pharmaceuticals at both your current location and your destination country to avoid any hassles with that. Next, raw wood, soil, and plants. This kind of shocked me a little bit, not so much the plants, because even here in the United States, you're not supposed to take a plant, let's say in Florida, and ship it up to, in a, in a moving van, let's say, <coughs> excuse me, to a place like New Jersey or New York. Now, shipping raw wood products or live uh, plants can introduce pest infestations and pose a threat to a different ecosystem, namely the one you're going to. So in order to protect the environment, many countries have very strict regulations regarding the shipment of wood, soil, and live plants. And it's advisable, again, to carefully review all of these regulations or work with experts like you would have an SDC International Shipping, your international uh, moving company to make sure that you're not packing something that you shouldn't be packing. Counterfeit goods. Counterfeit goods, including fake designer items, unauthorized replicas are illegal in many countries. My uncle was a transcontinental uh, captain for Pan Am back in the day, and he used to bring back all kinds of counterfeit items that they would get in other countries. So you could get, for example, jeans in other countries that for like a fraction of the price that you would get them here, but they were knockoffs. They were created in China. The same thing with music back in the day. You would be able to get albums and cassettes and all of these other things that were um, replicas. They were counterfeits. So if you have anything like that, even if it's just some old stuff that you're not even really thinking of anymore, but you don't want to throw it out, those kind of things can result in penalties, fines, or even legal actions. So it's best to recognize that intellectual property rights, those kind of things are taken very seriously, and you don't want to be involved in shipping anything that's considered counterfeit. Large amounts of cash and precious items, of course, that makes a lot of sense. Can you imagine like rolling up? Back in the old days, they used to hide money, the immigrants used to hide money. I'm talking about the Italian immigrants now. I know this because I heard the stories when I was a kid from my grandparents. They used to hide money under mattresses and shoe boxes. They would hide money in curtain rods all over the place because they didn't trust the banks, and uh, especially after the the banks crashed. So you can't take you know bundled up like you see in the movies large amounts of cash loose gems, precious metals, things like that, especially in large amounts, and just transfer them in regular shipping containers. Even if you have the box mislabeled so it looks like something else, believe me, it's not something you want to do. Next, endangered uh, species and ivory. Uh, international regulations prohibit the trade, sale, and shipment of products made from endangered species or ivory. And this includes things like ivory carvings, I remember back when I was a kid, there was I, ivory was all over the place. Furs, exotic reptile uh, skins, and all of that. Any animal-related product that's derived from an endangered species. You may have some of these things, and maybe you've had them for years. But today, shipping such things across into a, um, uh, a different border, over the border, it's considered to be illegal. And the penalties are more severe than you can imagine just for something like ivory and so you don't want to get caught thinking well i've had this little item it goes on the desktop it's not you know um hurting anybody it's been in our family for years and then suddenly at customs you're caught with it and they're, they act like you know you've broken a major rule so now you also have to recognize and this is going to vary depending on where you live that there are cultural or political systems that are much different from maybe where you're coming from, where everything is more uh, lax here than it is in other countries. For example, there are people here that you know burn the American flag, or maybe they have a, a picture of someone burning the American flag. If you have something like that with another country's flag and you're going into that country, anything that can be considered offensive, controversial, or illegal to that culture, or that even that political context, 
even some religious artifacts or political propaganda, um, these things are considered to be undermining uh, the tradition of the place you're going to. Those things are considered illegal. Pornography or other obscene materials, of course, it's going to be the up to the person actually looking through your items to determine what's obscene and what isn't. And here in the United States, a lot of things that are considered obscene in other countries pass for art. So just one of those things to be aware of. Anything illegal in your destination country, this should be something that is on the top of your to-do list to figure out what it is. And then, of course, you're going to work with us at SDC International Shipping. We'll help you go through all of that so that you don't find yourself in a situation on the other side where suddenly you're caught in a situation that you don't want to be in. And so I went online, a matter of fact, um, let me pull this up quickly here. I was just curious, for example, let's say you're going to Mexico, what's on their can't ship to list as of right now? Now this isn't coming right from the source, of course. I could contact the Mexican consulate to get the most updated list, but I was just interested in some of the prohibited uh, items. But in during my search, I received two lists. One was prohibited and one was restricted. So restricted means that it may be allowed, but it may not be allowed. There are certain restrictions, possibly on the amount that you're bringing and so forth. So on the prohibited list, they had narcotics, arms, and ammunition. Now, if you had a gun collection, even if it was antique weapons that don't aren't capable of firing any longer, it still may be considered prohibited. So just something to be aware of. Live fish. Maybe you're thinking, well, we're not going that far. Depending on where you live in the United States, we're going to go to Mexico. We want to bring our fish down with us. No, no live fish. Predators of any size. No, this is on the prohibited list. Images representing children in a degrading or ridiculous way. Very interesting. Ridiculous in there. Degrading is, is we understand what that means, but ridiculous, I mean, who interprets that? Use clothing that are not part of your personal luggage. So I guess there were people that decided they were going to sell uh, clothing in Mexico or maybe start a business there. No, you're not going to be able to bring used clothing that is not a part of your personal luggage. Firearms and ammunition. It seems that, unless you're in law enforcement maybe, firearms and ammunition, those types of things are frowned upon. Illegal in many countries. Most of Europe, you don't see people with guns anymore. Uh, definitely in the UK, that's a great example of it. I know people in other countries. America is different in that respect of anywhere else in the world. There are more guns here than anywhere else. Next, we have electronic cigarettes, and this is a new entry to the prohibited items list as of February of 2020. Money and securities, pornographic items, human corpses, organs, body parts, embryos, human and animal, cremated remains. Now, we also have a restricted list, and restricted, of course, is different from prohibited, but that's basically like saying maybe you can get some of this in but not all of it as far as how much that you have and this is just my interpretation of it but you would definitely want to know if you have something on the restricted list whether or not you're going to get through customs before you made the effort to do so rather than find out when you're actually there at the gate restricted items include things like lards fats and oils certain meats and animal products beer cigars and cigarettes, matches, certain types of tires, bicycle, footwear. I look at things like bicycles and footwear. Maybe they mean that they're restricted, meaning that if you have them for personal use, that's fine. But if you're trying to bring over too many and it's basically that somebody was going to resell them, that would be something that would be prohibited. You're using it for business purposes, in other words. For example, I did hear a story about having to do with footwear somebody was moving to another country they wanted to buy sneakers inexpensively and sell them online but they weren't able to set up their inventory warehouse in that other country and they were american next we have consumable items such as paper towels tissue white paper and diapers which may be subject to customs duties next Food, including spices, tin products, canned goods, supplements, and pet food. 
Next, beverages including wine, beer, and spirits, toiletries, sanitary goods, and cosmetics, hunting trophies, taxidermy items, cleaning chemicals including detergents and soaps, collectible items such as pens and coins. I have a little coin collection. I didn't even realize that that would, was on the restricted items list. Batteries, blank CDs, blank DVDs, and tapes, uh, automobiles, motorcycles, unless your client is a diplomat, there, is, there are restrictions there. Matter of fact, I'm just looking at Mexico right now just out of curiosity, but I was told by several people in SDC, and this is why it's great to have somebody on the inside helping you through this whole process rather than you be a do-it-yourselfer and do it online because SDC is up to date with the latest information, changes in the law and all of that, working closely with the customs people and the ports and doing it every day. But if you have like an antique car, maybe that is something that's worth bringing into the country of Mexico. We're talking about Mexico specifically. Otherwise, it's probably just better to sell it and to buy a car there. So that was the advice that I got. Matter of fact, I I think it was Rob that told me. Rob is the, uh, Robert, the uh, manager, general manager there. And we make, by the way, we do get together and we make videos. If you haven't seen our YouTube channel, SDC International Shipping, uh, you can connect with Rob through there also. If you have any direct questions, of course, we have the website too. But this is just an idea. I looked up a few other countries. I'm not going to go through them. One of the countries, the UK, they even had a ban on self-defense sprays like pepper sprays and things like that they were on the banned list so yeah depending on where you're going you're definitely going to want want to know ahead of time what's allowed and what isn't and so yeah your destination country every country is different of course in that way the united states i would say is more lax and i mean if you compare the united states of 2023 when this recording is being made to the united states of let's say 1973, then there were a lot more things that were legal back then that are illegal now. But if you're planning an international move, I think that now, especially if you listen to a few of our episodes, you're beginning to understand how important it is to be aware of the items that are prohibited, maybe not allowed in your destination country. And so by adhering to the regulations, you'll prevent all kinds of delays, legal issues or complications that may arise during your move. It's always important to consult with people who really know what they're doing and seek professional advice. I have to say, I tried to go around that and be a do-it-yourselfer in some areas. Instead of going right to the professional getting the information, I kind of went with the general opinion online. Thankfully, it turned out okay, but it could have went the other way. But there are specific guidelines and requirements in your destination country. So safe and responsible shipping will go a long way towards a good experience when you're moving to another country. Now, when you choose SDC International to make your big move, to make your shipment, you can feel confident that you're going to get top-notch service And the people here really do go above and beyond just providing general moving services. They're there to handle every aspect of the moving process so that you can relax and have a a worry-free relocation experience overseas. So whether you require things like item tracking or custom crating for uniquely shaped items, all of your needs can be covered and will be covered by SDC International Shipping. So that's all I have for you for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have, please go ahead and share it with a friend. Share the link on Facebook. Share it on Twitter or X as it happens to be now. Or just send someone an email. For more information, you can go to our main website, sdcinternationalshipping.com. We have several phone numbers. The one that I always remember is 877. This also is at the very top of our website. That number again is 877-339-0267. That's 877-339-0267. You can chat with us live there if you like, and you can also get a free quote from where you're moving from to where you're moving to. We have a little system there set up as well. So thanks again for listening. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next episode. 
We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks for listening. Whether you're relocating within the country or moving to the other side of the world, we're here to help from start to finish. Connect with us today at 888-779-3962. That's 888-779-3962.